Genesis chapter 22. You can be seated and as the spirit moves, you can come to the altar. As you know, God gave Abram a son named Isaac. And then instructed Isaac to be sacrificed by his own father. I want to show you one verse, Genesis chapter 22, verse number 9. Then they came to the place of which God had told them. And Abram built the altar there and arranged the wood and bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Abram stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord came to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. Do not stretch out your hand against the lad and do nothing for him for the Lord. For I know that you fear God. Since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. I want to make a point today. As you come to this altar, there are three things that I want you to keep on your mind. That whenever uh, you come to this altar, whenever you come to this altar to pray, I need you to understand that something should be lifted. Yeah. When, when Abram got to the altar, he came lifting up his son Isaac. And whenever you come to this altar, it should be to lift up somebody. It should be you. It should be a son, a daughter, a cousin. It should be this nation. It should be our governmental leadership that whenever you come to the altar, lift up somebody. The difficult thing for Abram was not what he was going to lift, but the second thing is what he was going to lose. When you bring it to the altar, the thing is that the thing that you are lifted, 
you are also going to have to lose. So when you come to the altar, not only come lifting something, but come losing something. Oh, I know y'all quiet. Come losing some mindset. Come losing some bondage. Come, come losing some bad practice or some bad habit. Some, come losing some attitude that is against the will of God. That when I come to the altar, the plan is I'm bringing something here that I want God to kill. I want God to take the taste out of my mouth. I want God to take the desire away from me. I, I want God to move that thought from out of my mind that's not of him. When I come to the altar, I don't just want to lift something. I want to lose something. But finally, as you come to this altar, don't be so arrogant that you think what you lifted that you can handle without God. Don't bring it to this altar and lift it and then walk back to your seat with it. When you come to this altar, you should be lifting something. You should be losing something. But then finally, you should be leaving something. You should be leaving it right on this altar saying, God, if you don't do it, I don't know who can. Let us come to lift somebody, to lose something, and to leave something. Right now, God, but it's already 
already made. The sickness is already healed, God. The condition is already remedied, oh God. We thank you for that today, God. God, we are not striving for the victory, but we're striving from the victory, God. The victory was won for us over 2,000 years ago. And all you do is ask us to trust you. Ask us to believe you, God. Oh, God, I praise you today, Lord. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for these, your people, oh, God. We come together as one, God. All of us having different needs and different concerns, oh, God. Some of us so private and so delicate that we dare not ever speak them aloud, oh, God. But you know, Master. You know, God. You know the things that we struggle with at the midnight hour, oh God. That nobody else knows the thoughts that come into our minds, oh God. You know, Father. But yet, Lord, none of that changes your love towards us, oh God. Thank you for loving us, Master. In spite of our shortcomings. In spite of our flaws, oh God. Your love, Father, so steadfast, so unmovable, so unchangeable, oh God. Oh, we thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you. We praise you, God. We thank you for this time of, of high praise and celebration on today, oh God. God, we praise you for what you've done. The way it's already made. Everything is already done, God. It's already done. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, it's already done. It's already done. Hallelujah. It's already done, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Eyes have not seen it. Ears have not heard, God. The good things that you've got planned for us, God. Oh, God, it's already done. All you ask us to do is walk with you. All you want us to do is trust you, God. We don't have to see it, God. But you declare that your words are light unto our feet and a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway, oh God. We just made one step at a time. You told us in all of our ways to acknowledge you. And you'll direct our path, God. You didn't tell us to figure out, you didn't tell us to work it out. You told us to follow you. And now, Lord, thank you that the burdens that we can't lift, you've lifted them, oh God. You've lifted them, Lord. We shall not enter again into this yoke of bondage, oh God. We leave it at your feet. Thank you for having it your own way, God. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, we are but the clay. God mold us and make us after thine own will, God. While we are waiting, yielded and still, whiter than snow, Lord, wash us, Lord. Lord, we can't wash ourselves, God. Wash us, Lord. Change us, oh God. We can't Come up like this. So have your way, God. And we thank you for it all. This morning, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Amen. And thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.
many know he is wonderful? Come on, don't fool me now. How many know he is wonderful? Come on, how many experienced him for himself and you can say, I know he's wonderful. Some of the things he's done in my life, I have no idea how he did it. It's a wonder. He's wonderful. Yes, sir. He is wonderful. Oh, I bless the name of the Lord today. He is wonderful. And we give his name praise. Can we give this great choir a hand clap of praise this morning? Hallelujah. 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 We bless the name of the Lord for them. <laughs> Go 
Wow, some of my old members have shown up today. Y'all just stand. I just want to just let me see you for just a moment. If you are, amen. It's more than that, Sister Fidelia. Bless you. Where are the girls at I saw looking grown now? Y'all stand. Let me see you. Bird and Addison. Amen. 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 I'm grateful for your presence today and thankful for what the Lord is doing in the life of the Second Mile Island Missionary Baptist Church. We are forever grateful. Listen, I cannot go any further without a warm felt thank you from Lady Reed and myself. Our first pastoral anniversary was phenomenal. God bless them in my world. I, I want to thank you for every card. I want to thank you for every offering. I want to thank you for every word of encouragement. Thank you for the cake and the punch and the celebration. And most of all, thank you for being you. Thank you for the honor of being able to be your pastor. I'm humbled by this opportunity. And I just want to tell you, words cannot express our gratitude for you allowing me the opportunity to pastor this fine church. Can you give yourselves a hand one more time? What a phenomenal job. We felt the love and we still feel it. And we're so, so grateful. And this choir acted a full Sunday afternoon. Lord have mercy. Thank you for the shift that you brought in this place. I want you to know your presence with us was, it was phenomenal. Sister Kim, uh, they took us and bought us lunch that day. Wouldn't let us pay for a thing. We ate good. I bless the name of the Lord. That was Sister Kim. Well, she over there hiding. The foremans, thank y'all so, so much for all that you guys done in between. All of the teams that were on it, everything was beautiful. Uh, it was beautifully decorated. Uh, we had a phenomenal time. I, I just want to tell y'all, uh, y'all set the standards high for year two. Y'all set the standards high for year two. Uh, with what y'all did in year one, y'all set the standards. And we're grateful for those that made it all that it was to be. Amen. All right.
over with. The long practices, the film sessions, the coaches yelling at them. And this is how it is. How would they recover? How would they bounce back? And as believers, it's not about how we handle the good times when things are going well. But it's about how do we handle the bad times when things are going not so smooth. When it seems like I can't catch a break. I have to finally say like Richard Dimples feels. <laughs> if it ain't one thing, it's enough. He said even my blues got the blues. And I remember playing football and somebody hitting me and knocked the wind out of me. And you can't breathe to get the wind knocked out of you. You can't, you can't breathe. It, it, it feels un, uncomfortable. It feels, you get anxious when you can't breathe and it hurts and it's painful. And sometimes life will knock the wind out of you. And you feel like you can't breathe and it's, it hurts and it's uncomfortable. And so many people lose hope. Every day, 132 Americans take their own lives. No hope. The story goes, there was a man who wasn't feeling well, and he got his wife and he went to the doctor to see the doctor. And the doctor ran all kind of tests on the man, and Got, got back the results and he told the wife, the doctor said, wife, let me talk to you for a second. He took the wife into his office and he was talking to the wife. He told his wife, listen, your husband is a sick man, but he can be okay, but it's going to be up to you. You got to take care of him, you can't give him no stress, you got to prepare all his meals, you got to have sex with him three times a week. And she walked out the doctor's office and husband asked her, what did the doctor say? She said, he said, you're not going to make it. No hope. But sometimes life will deflate you. Sometimes life will knock you down. Sometimes life will put you on your knees. Sickness. Financial problems. Worried about my child. No air. You can't bounce back with no air. You can't be used what God intended you to be used for with no air. You can't fulfill your purpose in life with no air. How do I, how do I bounce back? How do I, how do I recover? As Christians, we don't sorrow as those who have no hope. Because Jesus gives us hope. Not only does he give us hope, but Jesus is our hope. This is our confident hope because we serve a God who's not guessing, he's not wondering, he's not random, he's not worried, he's not afraid, he's not late, he's not erratic, he's not haphazard. God 
said all things work together for the good. God said weeping may endure for a night, but joy coming in the morning. God said he'll, he shall wipe every tear from our eyes. And if God said, I believe. And the Bible said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Thus the hope begins and ends with Jesus Christ. And no Jesus Listen, no Jesus equals no hope. We have a living hope because we serve a living Savior. So let's get to the story about Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. As Jesus would travel in Judea and uh, Galilee and Jerusalem and the surrounding uh, areas preaching and teaching. Whenever he entered Bethany, he knew he had an open invitation at the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Because they were his friends. He didn't have to call, he didn't have to send word, he didn't have to text. He would just show up. He was welcome at their home. I think the problem a lot of us have is are we allowing Jesus at the house? The question, are we letting Jesus come to the house? Does he have an open invitation to your house? We need him at the house because that's where all the hell is at the house. We can act like we got some sense up in here. We can act holy in here. But the problem is that at the house. Jesus, he works at the he works at the house. He healed Peter's mother-in-law at the house. He healed Jairus' daughter. He raised her at, at the house. He told Zacchaeus, come down, for today I must stay at your at your house. Is Jesus invited to your house? And listen, most of the time when we have guests coming over, we have people coming to our house, by the way, we, we, we clean up and we start dusting and washing sheets and washing towels and sweeping in places that ain't been swept in months. But Jesus said, listen, you ain't got to do all that. I want to help you clean up your dirty situation. They already told us what can wash away our sin. Nothing but the blood. He wants to clean up our physical house and our spiritual house. We, we, need, we need him at the house because, listen, I guarantee you that Satan is already there. The Bible says he's the prince power of the air, right? So, so these televisions that we're watching, these, these phones that our children own 24-7, you better, you better check your child phone. You better, you better check, check, check your phone. What you listening to? What what you watching? This pastor had a, had a gang member that joined his church. And the gang member got with the pastor after service and said, Pastor, man, I do 
I do good when I do service, man. I'm, I'm focused, man. I don't I don't think about all the stuff out there in the world, man. I, I keep my focus on, on God when I'm in here, when I'm in, when I'm in service, man. But when I'm out there, man, I got, I got problems when I get out there, man. I get to thinking about all this, the women and the smoking, and I get to thinking about all this other stuff that, that I should be thinking about, Pastor. What, what, what can I do? Pastor's asking, like, what do we do in here? You say, we, we, we praise God. Uh -huh. Say, what else we do? He say, we, we pray. What else we do? He say, you, you preach the word. He say, the same thing you do in here, do it out there. You want to stay focused, the same thing we do in here? Do it at the house. Do it out there. The text says in verse 3, Lord, the one that you love is sick. This is not just any home, but this is the home of the one that Jesus Love. I need to tell you, you are loved by, by Jesus. And you can be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, shook up, and still get sick. We should thank God for letting us know. And even though I'm saved, I still have problems. Sickness and even death. And your problems, your sickness is not an indictment on your relationship with God. It just confirms your relationship. Because whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. And we don't just whoop our children just to be whooping them. We whoop them for them to do better and to be better. My mother would say to me, this going to hurt me. Y'all remember that? Boy, this is going to hurt you. Now I thank mama. I thank mama for all those whippings. Because the whippings kept me out of jail. The whippings kept me out of the grave, y'all. The whippings kept me saying yes, sir, and no, sir. Yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. And there's a purpose to your pain. And my mother, she was a little bitty lady, about five foot, and she didn't go to any institution of higher learning. But she had a PhD in whipping. And I wish I'd known then what I know now. Because there is a way to mitigate all the pain from getting the whipping. There's a way to mitigate it. And uh, I don't know your voice. My mama, she, she was an extension cord mama. Anybody had an extension cord mama? Mama, she would have it, did she have it hanging on the door? We walk by the door and look. As a reminder, you have to remember, yeah. But there's a way to mitigate the pain of getting the whooping. Can I, can I show you? Can I show you? My brother Ryan, he, he, he had it bad. He, he would run. Just made mama mad when she caught it. But the way to mitigate it, come here, D. The way to mitigate the pain of getting a whooping, you can't stand like this. You can't stand like this because it gives the person whipping you all the power. Gives them all the talk that they need. To get all of the pain to you. But ain't the way to do it is to get close. 
<laughs> to the one that's looking. Now they have no power, no, no talk, and it eliminates all of the pain when you're going through your whipping. So I would encourage you today, when you're going through, get close to God. Come to Bible study. Come to church on Sunday. Get in the Word of God. Get close. And listen, there, there's a difference between discipline and condemnation. Let's make the distinction. The Bible says there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And the discipline comes to, to strengthen us, to make us stronger. And it's for training and for growth. Because God has more work for you to do. And then God eventually will, will say, that's enough. He's learned his lesson. And mama used to say, stop crying before I give you something to cry about. You trying to stop crying? So listen, y'all, Mary and Martha have a problem at the house. Their brother is sick. And it's good to have God at the house. But it's vital to have him at the house when there is an issue going on. When there's trouble at the house. So Mary sends word to Jesus. The one that you love is sick. And for two days, nothing. Can you see them looking out the window? Looking out the door? Where is, where is Jesus? And I know it's one thing for someone down the street to have an issue. Even somebody next door to have a situation going on. But when it's at my house, when it comes to my address, it's a different level of anxiety. Mary and Martha knows Jesus is coming and he is coming. But for two days, nothing. One of the hardest things to do is to wait on God. Because you have to accept when and how God works out. And verse 6 says when he heard he stayed where he was two more days. And listen church, church you always mess yourself up mess yourself up trying to figure out God. Romans says his ways are past finding out. How can the finite understand the infinite? How can the creation understand the creator? So what do I do when Jesus does not come? When I want him to come? My brother is sick. My husband is sick. My wife is sick. My child is sick. The bill is due. They're going to turn the lights off. What do I do? My daughter is on drugs. My son is on drugs. And Jesus, I need you to show up. Nothing. The problem is we live in the right now. My brother is sick right now. My child is in trouble right now. 
But our God lives in the right now, but he also lives in the not yet. And until my right now catches up to God's not yet, I will never see Jesus on the way. We all know he's omnipresent. He's every place at the same time, right? But our God is so awesome. And that's hard enough for us to wrap our mind around. But our God even bigger than that. He's in every place at the same time. Every period of time at the same time. He's in 1923. He's in 2023. He's already in 3023. And our God, he's big, God. He's, he's, he's just so big. And why are you trying to figure it out? God already, already worked it out. And our little situations are nothing to, to, to God. And we can shout, we can shout, we can shout because uh, he operates in the not yet. You, you, you got your healing in the not yet. You, your child is saved in the not yet. Your, your relationships are restored in the not yet. Your marriage is renewed in the not yet. Your finance in the black in the not yet. Paul said, call those things that are not as though they were. Can we take a few seconds to thank God for the not yet? Your healing is on the way. But in the meantime, you got to keep praying. Keep calling and keep sending for him. Keep looking for him to show up. We can't give up. You're allowed to cry. You're allowed to get upset. You're allowed to get angry. But you're not allowed to quit. You got to keep going, y'all. Keep expecting God to do what he said he would do. And he may not come when you want him. You're going to want him when he comes. Jesus said to the disciples, our friend Lazarus is sick. They thought he meant, he said he's sleep. They thought he meant he was, he was asleep, but Jesus had to tell them, Lazarus is dead. Now he's on his way to see about his friends. And he could have just spoke a word and Lazarus would have been healed, but he, but he came. Thank you, Jesus, for coming. Through 42 generations, he came. To seek and to save, he came. And to help this baby, he came. No room in the end. But he came. While men walked around on a way, he came. The Savior of the world came. And he came, number one, to give glory to God. He came because he loved him. He came to strengthen his disciples. And he came to demonstrate his power over death. And Martha heard Jesus was finally coming. She went out to me. And I'm convinced. Dave, I'm convinced that Martha was a sister. You gotta remember they were friends, right? She going to get Jesus straight. I see her now rolling her neck. Her finger in Jesus' face. We sent for you two days ago. Where have you been? 
And listen, she didn't go all the way left because she addressed him as Lord. If you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But I know even now you can, God will give you whatever you ask. And notice, Jesus did not rebuke her because he understood that she was hurting over the loss of her brother. Jesus said, Martha, your brother will rise again. She said, I know that Jesus, he's going to rise again in the last day of the resurrection. But listen, can I tell you what Martha's problem was? She had faith, but it was a, com a complaining faith. And a complaining faith will question if Jesus is done or knows what is best. A complaining faith is a, is a limited faith because it counteracts hope. A complaining faith will hinder you because when you, when you complain, it, it, you start questioning and stop trusting. Say, say that again, when you complain and you stop trusting and start questioning. If you had been here, if you had come when we called you, my brother would not have died. But then she called herself. She said, even now, God will give you whatever you ask. And she still had limited faith because she, she didn't understand that she was, she was talking to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus said, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believed in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever lived and believed in me shall never die. Believers never die. Say that again. Believers never die. That's the hope right there. Believers never die. We just transition from this life to the next. Yes, the body dies, but the soul, the spirit lives on forever. Y'all looking at me, y'all see me up here. You, 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 you see Taylor, but you don't really see Taylor because the real Taylor, not up here, the real Taylor on, on the inside, the one that, you, one that you can't see. That's the real Taylor. But the one you see is anointed unto every man wants to die. But after this, the judgment. But Jesus is the first begotten of the dead. And because he got it, we can also get up. Jesus is done with Martha. Here comes Mary. And her response is totally different from her sister, Martha. The text said when she saw Jesus, she fell at his feet. Mary liked being at the feet of Jesus. While in Luke, while Martha was serving, Mary was at his feet. Martha was complaining even then. Jesus, make Mary get up and help me serve all these people in here. Jesus said, Mary has chosen the, the good part. Listen, church, your, your praise should come before your petition. Your praise should come before your petition. When you praise God for who he is, then you can ask him for what you want. Jesus sees her praise. He feels her hurt. And now he responds to her request. Because he says, show me where you laid. 
Jesus tells them to remove the stump. Here comes Martha again. Wait a minute, Jesus. I know you, Jesus, the Son of God, and all that. He been dead for four days. And I don't care how bad you think it is. Jesus can handle your dead, dirty, rotten, decaying, sour, stinky situations. And most of us don't want nobody to know, even Jesus, about some of the stuff, some of the places, some of the things that we have done. But there's nothing you have done or can do. No loss, no death, no calamity, no hurt, no tragedy, no power beyond the grasp of Jesus. Jesus confronts death head on and nobody can do what Jesus can do. He's undone it by the stench of death. The text says he cried with a loud voice. Lazarus come forth. He called Lazarus by his name because when he had just said come forth everybody at the graveyard would have started getting up but he said, Lazarus, come forth. Can you see Lazarus walking around heaven? Walking around heaven, he says, Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Verse 44, it says, He that was dead. He that was dead. I like that because all of us was dead in our trespasses and our sins. But the Lamb of God came to take away the sins of the world because one Friday he died, he died, he died, he died. Hear the old preacher say, didn't he die? Matthew said he died. Mark said he died. John said he died. Luke said he died. He died. He died. But early, 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 before the rooster crew, early, before the dew drops fell, he got up with all power in his hands. Now it don't matter what I'm going through. Jesus can speak life into a dead situation. He can pump life. He can pump life. He can pump life. Whatever you're going through. He can pump life. He can pump life. Sickness. He can pump life. The house, he can call life. So with a child, he can call life. No money in your pocket, he can call life. Trouble on the job, he can call life.
Lazarus come for me. Lazarus came. Hopping. I agree. And Jesus told him, y'all standing around. Loose it. Something is missing in your life. Amen. Come on, brother. 
and you just you just want to rededicate. You just want to make sure that your life is lining up with the Word of God. You've been watching everybody else around you moving in their ministries and doing what God called them to do, and you're ready for the Lord to birth something new in you. If that's you, and you just want to rededicate your life, we want you to meet us at the altar. We just want to breathe the word of prayer over you and confess God's best over your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There may be others. There may be others. Oh God, we bless you today. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise for the spirit of partnership. Hallelujah. Watch that deacon boy stand united with that new member. God, I bless you today. Hallelujah. We are one team. Oh God, we bless you. Come on, sister. Hallelujah. 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 God, we bless you today. God, we bless you today. Oh, God, we bless you. There are others still coming. They're still coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. How many know the real ministry takes place after the benediction? We need prayer. We need prayer because when we walk out of this place and out of the comforts of this sanctuary, we need a Savior that will go with us. Hallelujah. Before we pray, let me ask a question. Is there anybody up here that's up here for membership? Is everybody already members? Everybody already members, right? Everybody already members. Amen. For prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to say um, to this beautiful soul, I do not know her. Um, and Minister Taylor, what a word from God today. We all, if we look in the mirror, we do not look the same. We don't talk the same. We don't dress the same. Um, and her spirit was so vexed during service that I'm ashamed. But I stand here to say that we are better together. We are better together. We are truly better together. And I just want you to know, she said, I don't like going to church because they look at me and they talk about me. They doing the same thing to me, sis. But we come anyway. We come anyway. To lift up the name of Jesus. Welcome. You are welcome here. At Second Mile. You are welcome here. And I asked her if she mind if you call for prayer that we would pass the ball, Minister Tate. Yeah. And we would do our part. This is what we're better together looks like. If she feels uncomfortable, then we need to make her feel uncomfortable. This is the spiritual hospital. Yeah. And we come in here to be triaged. Some of us in ICU. Some of us in the waiting room. And we should not have a sister in here or a brother in here that says that I'm uncomfortable because we looking at them a certain type of way. So, I stand with her. It's International Women's Month and according to the message that was preached on today, we honor and salute you today, you beautiful woman. You fearfully and wonderfully made woman of God. You are his workmanship, fashion for his glory. You are welcome to his second by now, the missionary Baptist Church. Anytime. 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 She was standing over there. She said, they don't want me. I said, well, they got to go through me. And I say that publicly. As his wife, the first lady of this church, y'all going to have to go through me. In the name of Jesus. You are welcome to you. Amen. Amen. The Bible said that 
the Lord came to seek and to save that which was lost. If everybody that comes into this church looks like us, then we're really not doing our job. God wants us to give this free gospel to the world. And he said, there are others of this fold that have not yet come. And it's those that we stand to minister his message of hope to. Job well done today, Minister Taylor. Message of hope is what we need. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We thank you for these that stand at your altar, Father. Father, we thank you for they stand for multiplicity of reasons, Father. But we thank you that the answer is always the same, Jesus. That if we need healing in our bodies, Jesus. That if we need finances, Jesus. That if we need relationship help, Jesus. That if we need awakening in our spirit, Jesus. That if we've lost hope and we need somebody to have hope in, Jesus. That if it died and we need somebody to wake it up, Jesus. That if we're going to get where you called us to be, Jesus. That we're tied up and wrapped up in Jesus Christ. Father, if we cannot give them anything else, we give them Jesus today, Father. We give them Jesus free because we got Jesus free. That when we walk down this aisle and we were lost and separated from you, somebody gave us Jesus Christ. Father, we lift him today. For you said, if I, when I be lifted up, that I'll draw all men unto me, Father. And in 2023, he's still drawing. He'll still draw people that come off the streets and say, I want a better way. He'll still draw people that been in church all their lives, but never really knew Jesus. Jesus will still draw. All we got to do is lift him up. Father, have your way in the life of each and every person that is at this altar. Whatever they stand in need of, Father, the answer is in you. And we pray, Father, that you would give it to them liberally, Father. We thank you, Father, that there's nothing too hard for you. That you're opening doors right now. Even as we pray, you're making ways, Father. And we give your name praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand all over the building? We're ready. Would you stand all over the building? Ushers, thank you so much for coming up with our brother. That is a great show of unity and a message to this church. Uh, that we stand by our own and we do what we can to lift one another up. Uh, that is truly a wonderful picture of we're better together. That when one hurt, the whole group came. I bless the name of the Lord for you and your fellowship. Uh, let me speak a blessing over you. May the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. May he be gracious to you in your labor and your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears, when you rise up early and when you settle late, in your happy days and when you're sad until that day. That we all sit at the feet of Jesus where there'll be no sunrise and no sunset. But until then, remember Jesus.